Uh, I mean, we've been able to maintain our uh, cost income ratio at about 40% and slightly below that. Um, and one of the, the big advantages is that uh, this early adoption of uh, technology, digital and AI, has helped us be able to contain the headcount cost growth. So for example, in the area of uh, collection, because we have a very sizable retail portfolio and the collection efforts are very substantial. But today with AI technology, the bots are able to collect from the customer, especially at the friendly reminder part of it, right? as effectively as what a human can. So in that area, I think we're able to save about 10 to 20% of our headcount cost growth in terms of a lot of these telemarketing, outbound calls area. And we're also seeing benefits in various other areas, including in our operations area, and able to bring down the cost of headcount growth, where headcount is obviously the biggest part of any bank's cost. Mm -hmm. How much more sophisticated can AI become in terms of it, it being integrated into the operations? Because you talk about this actually taking and making some of these low-level services, if I can call it that, more efficient. But how much more sophisticated can AI transform the business based on what you're seeing or foreshadowing? So we, we have uh, quite a number of use case pilots going on right now. Uh, most of the point that you brought up has been focused on the costs and the efficiency part of it. But the other big area is actually on the productivity and the revenue generation. Uh, we are looking at how we can uplift the RM's productivity. Typically in banking, you have a client to RM ratio in different parts of the business. And that ratio has been fairly stagnant over the last 20, 30 years. With the power of AI, a co-pilot, and an augmented assistant, there's potential to uplift that human's productivity significantly and at the same time increase the quality of the services right, and the insights that the RMs can bring to their clients. Right. You know, in the last couple of months, we've spoken to many people in Malaysia, from the likes of Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim to your trade minister and other people in the chip space about the need to upskill. Because when you're trying to at least to move up the value chain and try to introduce some of these new technologies, you need to make sure that the people in Malaysia, the workforce itself, has the adequate skills to meet these new demands. How is Hong Leong Bank meeting those challenges if, if that is a challenge in terms of making sure that, hey, I want to adopt AI, but I need to make sure that the people who work at Hong Leong can actually adopt these or have the skills to do that. Is this something that, uh, that Hong Yong is also focusing on? Or? Well, a very, very good point, JP. Uh, absolutely. I think AI as a strategy has to be both top-down and bottoms-up. So at Hong Leong Bank, uh, what we have done is to try and implement what we call AI champions across the entire spectrum of the organization. And one of the ways that we can do this is to expose them to where the best practices are in the world. So recently, we have sent quite a lot of teams to China uh, to look at how AI is being implemented there. Uh, the scale of how AI is being implemented in China is pretty impressive. So we have uh, visited quite a number of the, the big and mid-sized banks, uh, including talking to Bank of Chengdu, uh, one of our associate banks, who is also at the forefront of AI implementation. And also sending people to Singapore, for example, this week at the Singapore FinTech Festival, we have a, a delegate of more than 10 people here, and giving them the exposure. At the same time, this is such a new field, right? So nobody's really an expert. Right? You, we hear a lot of experts, you know, but I guess we're all learning on this journey. And if you put your mind to it, you dedicate enough resource to it, in about 6 to 12 months, you'll be quite near you know, the front of the curve.